Para pa para pa. Bam. Today we're making Super Mario Bros. This is gonna be challenging. So let's -a go. The size of the screen should be 256 by 240 pixels. And we did just that. Now we need to draw this handsome guy with a mustache on the screen. I made a new class that has only one function for now. And that function draws Mario on the screen. That wasn't so hard. Now we're gonna work on the map. We're gonna sort the map as a vector of arrays. Because the width of the maps can be different while the height is always the same. I made a new function that draws the map. For now we'll only draw the floor. Alright, now we can focus on Mario. First we're gonna move Mario horizontally so I wrote this code. There we go. Now to make this game more realistic, we're gonna add gravity. Yeah, let's add collisions now. First we're gonna get the position of Mario. Then we're gonna check all the cells that Mario is currently intersecting by using these formulas. For now we're only gonna check vertical collisions. It works. Now let's make sure that Mario doesn't go beyond the map. Here's the code which limits Mario's movement. Ok, now we need to add the horizontal collision. And for that, we're gonna use bitwise operators. Our map collision function checks 4 cells at most. And we can represent those collisions using binary numbers. So the function will return a number between 0 and 15. Then we can use bitwise operator n to check collisions in 4 different directions. Bitwise operators just go through each bit of 2 numbers and perform any operation with them. The resulting bit will become a part of the resulting number. Writing the code was a bit tricky, but I did it. I also added two pillars for testing. And it seems to be working. Now let's add jumping. We're just gonna change the vertical speed when the player presses the jump button. Let's see if this little mustache boy can jump over this obstacle. That's a really good jump. Ok, to fix this we're gonna make Mario jump only if he's standing on something. It's working. But in order to make the game more like the original, Mario needs to jump higher the longer we press the jump button. To do that I made a new variable called jump timer. And while that timer is greater than 0, we're not gonna change Mario's vertical speed. Here's the low jump. And here's the high jump. The last thing we need to add is acceleration and friction. We're gonna increase Mario's horizontal speed until it reaches its maximum. We'll also decrease it if the player is not moving Mario. This is fun. Alright, now that we're done with Mario, let's start working on the... Just like before, we're gonna store the map as an image. The sketch will be divided into two sections. The top half will store the tiles. The bottom half will store the entities. We're gonna convert that image into a map by using this new function. I also changed the draw map function. We're gonna get the color of the pixel and the pixels around it. Then we're gonna choose and draw the correct tile from our tile set based on those colors. For now, we're only gonna draw the clouds. Alright, now let's draw the rest of the map. I really hope I did everything right. To see the whole map, we're gonna move the view to the right. Hmm, I feel like I forgot something. Pipes? Exactly! Boom! There we go! I didn't draw the castle because I'm lazy. Now it may seem like it's working, but if you look close enough, you'll see some artifacts. Alright, I think I fixed it. Let's see. I just made it worse. Ok, new plan. We'll divide the sketch into three sections. The top section will store the blocks, the middle one will store the entities, and the bottom one will store the background tiles. Alright, here's our brand new drama function. This should work. Oh, come on! Ok, I finally got it working. Now let's add collisions. We just need to add this piece of code. Alright, now let's make the view follow Mario. We're gonna change the view's position using this formula. Ok, it's time we add... Here's the class for Goombas. Goombas will behave similar to Mario so I simply copy pasted the code. They'll change their direction once they hit something. I also added a new condition in the convert sketch function to include Goombas. Let's test it. Alright, show yourself Goomba. That's not a Goomba. I still don't know why I have to do this. There we go. Now this may seem like a success, but we don't see some of the Goombas that are in our map sketch. To fix this we need to update the Goombas only when Mario is near them. We're just gonna add this little condition in the Goombas update function. We're also not gonna draw Goombas that are outside the view for optimization. Now Goombas start moving when Mario comes close to them. Optimizing Goombas got me thinking that we should also only draw the part of the map that is visible on the screen. And we can do that by simply changing the range of the loop. Now it may look like nothing's changed, but if we increase the size of the view, we can see what's happening behind the scenes. I kinda want it to stay like that. The next thing I wanna add is Goomba Goomba collision. Because right now they're just going through each other. First I made a new function that returns the hitbox of the Goomba. We'll go through each Goomba and see if the hitbox of that Goomba overlaps with the hitbox of the current Goomba. Let's see. 
Um, why are they not moving? After thinking for a while, I realized that this Goomba is also included in the vector of Goombas we're checking. So to fix this, we're gonna compare this Goomba's memory address with the address of the Goomba we're checking. Please work. Oh yeah. In the same way, we can check collision with Mario. I made a new function which we'll call when the Goomba needs to die. We'll stop updating the Goomba and change its sprite. If I did everything correctly, Goombas should die when we touch them. Okay, to make sure the Goombas die correctly, two conditions must be met. First, when Mario jumps on a Goomba, the Goomba should die. Second, when Mario touches a Goomba, Mario should die. After the Goomba and Mario collide with each other, we're gonna check whether or not Mario's vertical speed is greater than zero. If it's true, then the Goomba will die. I also added a death timer that starts when the Goomba dies. And once it reaches zero, we're gonna delete the Goomba from the vector. If we simply touch the Goomba, nothing will happen. But if we jump on it, the Goomba dies. Let's also make Mario bounce after this. And now we can do this. Now let's make Mario die when he touches a Goomba. Here's our new function which will change Mario's sprite when he dies. We're gonna use death timer again, except when it reaches zero, Mario will bounce off the screen. Let's see. It works. It's time for our final step. To be honest, I don't like using the original sprites. I wanna add something for myself. So let's do it. I tried not to go far from the original while also bringing my own style to it since I don't have to limit myself in terms of colors. Also in the original game, the clouds and the bushes have the same texture to use less memory. And I decided to keep it that way. It was tough. But now this looks a lot better. Let's work on Mario now. First we need to redraw him. Can't forget the mustache. Oh yeah, look at those legs. Why is this so funny? Handsome arms. And we're done. I also changed the map collision function so now instead of having to call it several times, we can just give it a list of cells to check. Alright, now let's add animations. Here's standing Mario, jumping Mario, losing Mario, and walking Mario. I made a new class for animations. It's gonna have an iterator and once that iterator reaches the animation speed, we're gonna restart it and change the current frame. We're gonna use that class only for the walking animation since that's the only animation we have. In other cases we'll just change the sprite we're drawing. To flip the image, we're gonna read it from right to left so that it appears flipped on the screen. And now Mario feels like an actual living person. But we're not done with Mario just yet. We also need to add the breaking sprite. We'll show the sprite when Mario is walking in one direction and the player is pressing the opposite direction. Here's how it looks in the code. At first I was happy that it worked, but then I pressed both keys at the same time and this happened. To fix this bug I had to rewrite the movement code. And now when we press both keys, Mario stops moving. I'll never get bored of this. The only thing left is the Goomba so I quickly made new sprites for them. Then I used the animation class to animate the walking. And we're finally done! I think we did a good job here. As always the code is in the description. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to subscribe, like and also 